Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design a scrollable recent post widget area in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is to create our recent posts widget. So to do that, we're going to come over here to appearance, click on widgets. And then over here, we're just going to name it, click on create. So for this to show, I'm just going to refresh here. And now we can see here it's been added as recent posts. So what we're going to do now is to drag the recent posts uh, widget here and drag it in this area here. We also need to give it a title. So let's call this recent posts. And the number here could be, you know, whatever you want. So let's just put 40 for now. Click on save. So now we have a widget that has been added to our website. Right, so the next stage now is to create our page. So I'm going to come over here to Pages, click on Add New. Now we can give a page a name. You can name this whatever you want, but I'm just going to call this Scrollable Recent Posts. Click on Use Divi Builder. So now this is going to take me to this landing page, which allows me to choose whichever option I need to. But uh, for now, I'm going to go with Build from Scratch. So I'm going to click on that. We're going to need a single column for this. Now, before we add any modules, what we need to do is to add a background color to our section. So I'm going to come over here to the top, click on section settings, and then I'm going to click on background. So I'm going to add my background color by clicking this plus button and pasting my color in here. And by the way, if you want to use the colors that I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Next, I'm going to add some custom padding, but this is only going to be to the bottom. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and I'm going to add zero to the bottom. We're going to save this and then we're also going to go into the row settings and remove the padding to the bottom as well. So I'm going to click here on design spacing and add zero to padding bottom. Great. So now it's time to add our text module. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for my text module and then select it. So in here, we're just going to add a title which says from our blog. And we're going to make this heading two. So I'm going to highlight the text. And then over here, I'm just going to click on this drop down and select heading two. Next, we need to come over here to design and stylize this text because as you can see, it's taken the color of our background. So we can't really see the text. So I'm going to come over here to heading text, click on heading two. And then we're going to start off by changing the font. So we want this font to be Roboto. So I'm going to search for it. This is a Google font. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And then over here, uh, we need to make it all caps. So I'm going to select all caps. And the most important thing is to make it white because we can't see it. So I'm going to select white and now we can see the text. Right. So moving on, we're going to set the size to 40 pixels. And we also need to add some letter spacing. And this is going to be two pixels. And then we're going to save. Right, so the next stage now is to create a speciality section. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button, click on speciality. And the option we're going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to select it. So I'm going to start by adding our column. So here I'm going to go with a single column. I'm going to close this for now. And then we're going to go into our speciality section settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on background. And we're also going to give this a background color. And the color we're going to add here is the color that we used before. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Next, we're going to uh, set our custom padding. So I'm just going to come over here to spacing. So here we need to add our custom padding to the right, I mean to the bottom of zero. So I'm going to add it here. And then we're going to come over here to column two custom padding. We're also going to add zero to that. Add my chain so this can be applied both to the top and the bottom. And back over here to design, uh, we need to come over here to sizing. And the very first thing we need to do here is to make sure that our gutter width is activated and set to two. Right. So all this is done now. I'm going to save, and then we need to we need to go into the row settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to access the row settings. Click on design sizing. So here we need to set our height to 640. So I'm going to type it here. Next, we're going to add a border to the top. So I'm going to scroll down here, click on border. So our border width here needs to be set to eight pixels. 
and we also need to set our color. So here, in fact, before we set our color, we need to make sure that it's applied to the top only and it's eight pixels. Right, so we also need to uh, add our color. So I'm gonna come over here and paste my color. We also need to add our, our bottom border. So I'm gonna click here. It's gonna be the same size. So make sure that this is eight pixels. And we're also going to add our color right here, like that. Right, so we have a border now, both on the top and the bottom. Now it's time to add our blog module. So I'm just gonna save this, click this plus button, and I'm just gonna search for blog. I'm gonna select it. So first of all, I need to set how many posts I need to have in here. So it's gonna be two. Right, so the next step now is to customize the layout of our blog post. So I'm gonna click here on design, click on layout. Right now it's set to full width, but we need this set to grid. To grid. So now our posts are side by side. The next thing we need to do now is to customize our font. So I'm gonna come over here to our title font. In fact, to easily access it, what I normally do is to click on this, click on this blush, brush tool. <laughs> so this will take me straight to my heading. So here we need to change our font to Roboto. Next, we need to uh, go to the meta text. And again, this needs to be set to Roboto. And for the weight, it needs to be set to light and all caps. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is the pagination text. So I'm just gonna click on this brush tool. So uh, first of all, I'm gonna set it to white so we can easily see it. Change the font to Roboto. Again, we're gonna make it all caps. And the text size is gonna be 18 pixels. So we, we want it nice and big. And we're also going to add some letter spacing and we're gonna set this to two. So I think we're okay now with this design. So I'm gonna go ahead and save. Now over here to, to the right, we are going to add a sidebar. So I'm gonna click on this plus button and I'm gonna search for my sidebar. Select it. So this is where we're going to choose our recent posts widget that we created earlier on in the tutorial. So I'm gonna select it. So you can see here they have been added. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to come over here to the title font because right now we can see we can't read it. So we need to make a few customizations to it. So first of all, we're gonna change the font to from default to Roboto and we're gonna make it all caps and we're gonna make the color white. So now we can actually see the heading here, which is great. So the next thing we're gonna do is to just add some letter spacing because for, for, for some reason, this font here is a bit too, bit too tight. So we're gonna set this to two. Okay, so that's looking much better. And we're also going to underline this. Right, so the next thing, thing, the next thing we're gonna do is to come over here to layout and show border separator. We're gonna say no to that. And then making sure our alignment here is set to left. Now let's give this sidebar a maximum height. So I'm gonna come over here to sizing. So on the height here, we're gonna set this to 640. And then we're gonna come over here to spacing and add some custom padding. So here we're gonna add 30 pixels both to the top and the bottom and 5% right. Right, so the next stage now is to add our vertical overflow. So I'm gonna come over here to advanced, click on visibility. And then over here on the vertical overflow, we need to set this to scroll. So what will happen is uh, if uh, the more posts that we're going to have here, uh, instead of uh, cutting them off, we're going to have a scroll bar that's gonna show up here once this list is filled. So for now, let's go ahead and save. And for a bonus tip, we can also add some CSS to this to make uh, the scroll bar look a bit more stylized. So we're gonna come over here to our section settings, click on advanced, custom CSS. In fact, we need to go to CSS ID and classes, and we're going to set our CSS class, paste it here. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use any of these CSS classes and CSS codes, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that we've added our CSS class, next we're gonna add our CSS code. So I'm gonna click here on these three little dots on expand settings. And then I'm going to click here on this gear icon. So this allows me to add CSS code to this particular page. So I'm gonna click here on advanced, custom CSS, and I'm gonna paste it here. So this CSS code that I've just added, you can see here, it just added this line, only affects this page. 
So I'm going to come over here, click on save. And what I'm going to do now is to just add a few more posts here so you can see the scroll bar. All right, so I've added some extra posts. So as you can see here, when I scroll, now we have a scroll bar. And if I click on it, it changes color. So this is what the CSS does. So pretty much this is our final design. So go ahead, give it a try and see how it comes out. If you have any questions, leave your questions in the comments box below and I'll do my best to respond to your questions. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.